This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're here to check out an option for sim racers when it comes to your footwear. And I know not all sim racers even wear shoes while sim racing, but for those with heavier duty pedals, it is something you have to consider. So today we are checking out the Goodyear Tire Company. Goodyear Tire Company throttle racing inspired sneaker. And why do I call it racing inspired? Well, because it is, it has all of the features of a racing shoe or racing sneaker or boot, but it doesn't have an FIA certification for fire safety. It means it makes a great track day shoe, a great, great casual shoe for expressing yourself as someone who loves racing. And in our case, a great sim racing, or I should say an option as a sim racing shoe or boot. The throttle racing sneaker goes for $65 and comes in black or white. And in both cases, that comes with a white bottom or sole of the shoe. The $65 throttle sneakers are made of a highly durable synthetic upper material, along with an authentic Goodyear Tire Company rubber white sole. Combined, these make the shoes relatively lightweight. The upper synthetic material is breathable and has a leather type finish and texture to it, these being in black. There's a semi-slick feel to this material along with a certain amount of shine. There are stitching patterns across the shoe, giving it a look similar to a soccer boot. On the outside of the shoe and on the back of the heel are small Goodyear logos. The bottom side of the shoes are in white and have a light anti-slip tread on them. There are no large grooves or pockets that will keep them smooth on the pedals and free of catching on any edges. There's also a small Goodyear logo imprinted on the bottom. And there's also a slightly rounded heel on the sole, making for good rotation of the ankle on the pedal. Focusing our attention to the inside of the shoe, it has a nicely padded tongue on the shoe with a little Goodyear logo there as well. The inside liner of the shoe is also heavily padded with a fabric material with the heaviest padding being right on the heel portion. This padding continues to the midpoint of the interior and then the entire middle to front of the shoe is mostly unpadded on the inside. When looking at the shoe in its overall form, it has a very flat look to it with no built up heel that you'd find on other types of shoes. There are no extra wings or extrusions sticking out on the side for stability like athletic shoes. And this keeps the shoe free of getting caught on pedal faces, carpeting or other obstructions for our feet while driving. The finish of the shoe is nicely done with no loose stitching, no excessive glue marks, and no uncomfortable seams. Now you might be thinking to yourself, haven't I already seen these shoes on this show? And the answer is, well, no, kinda, sorta. Goodyear first came out with the Ori driving shoe, and it is a very similar shoe, but there are some major differences between the two. The new throttle is a bit cleaner looking of a shoe, and it would probably work in slightly nicer circumstances, not in the car like trade shows or wearing around for style. The Ori looks a bit more sport oriented and the throttle looks a little bit more stylish. Another big difference is the sole or bottom of the shoe. The Ori has a black bottom with a Goodyear logo on it and the throttle is white and a little more plain. And the Ori has a little bit more of a rounded heel for driving than the throttle. And then the final big difference between the two that I could see was that the, the Ori shoe is actually stiffer from midsole to the heel than the throttle racing sneaker, sneaker is. Now, when I order driving shoes, I typically order them about a half a size smaller than my regular shoes because they're not for the purpose of walking around town. For, they're for the purpose of operating my pedals. And I don't want any extra shoe in the way of that operation. The Goodyear sizing was right on the money and that size fit as expected. The shoes have a very flat feel and are a little bit hard or unpadded on the bottom when walking. There's also very little arch support when comparing them to an athletic shoe. 
Now, for me and the purposes of this review, it really comes down to how do they work in sim racing most specifically, and I guess you really have to go back to the socks versus shoes argument. So if you're out there sim racing on a standard set of Logitech, Thrustmaster, or even a non-load cell variation of Fanatic pedals, well then socks are the way to go. I'm not trying to convince you of anything different. In fact, the delicate operation of those type pedals is better done in socks. However, if you've upgraded your hardware and you have a load cell brake pedal, if you have anything that could be described as a heavy duty pedal set or a hydraulic brake, well then let's face it, it's time to step up to shoes and the amount of pressure that you need to deliver can actually be operated better in shoes, especially when it comes to heel and toe operation. So when I am racing, I'm using my Rickmotec Real Gear GT Pro pedals. These pedals have heavier springs on the throttle, a super high pressure hydraulic brake pedal, and a hydraulic clutch with a bite point type spring setup. I've been racing in shoes ever since going to these pedals and have tried many combinations. The Goodyear throttle shoes really start at the heels for me. The shoes heel padding is exceptional and when sitting in my rig for hours, that is very important. Next is the heel and how it contacts the floor or base of my rig. The throttle shoe's rounded heel is just enough to roll nicely. The rubber sole also holds in place well while operating my gas pedal, yet releases easily from the base when I lift my foot under braking. Another important aspect of a shoe for driving is how it holds the face of the pedal. Deep grooves will get hung up on edges of the pedal that can actually cause misoperation. The throttle pedal has no such issues, and like the grip on the heel can hold its grip well and slide when intended. The stiffness of the shoe does a great job of protecting my foot from the heavy pressure of the brake pedal, preventing any foot fatigue from occurring. Now the best test of a pair of shoes while driving comes when we do some heel toe downshifting. And despite not being a master of that art, it is still a way I drive from time to time, and it really tests your feet and shoes to their limits. Heel and toe driving requires a shoe that is just strong enough to press that brake pedal, and at the same time, being able to flex outward to blip the gas. Not all shoes are capable of doing this, quite honestly, and a mistake could lead to something as severe as a blown engine. It also requires much quicker movements on the pedals and you're constantly changing your placement on the pedals compared to the always in contact go-kart style of left foot braking. The throttle shoes did well for me under those conditions. It allowed that dexterity as a result of the low profile design and with no protruding edges that ever hang up on my pedals. The combination of flex and stiff worked well for blipping the throttle, and they still held up strength-wise with my right foot doing so much work. And another thing I do need to mention when it comes to heel and toe driving, for those who roll their foot, there is no side protection. It's almost like this is intended more of like a Ferrari two-pedal only style or a go-kart style driving shoe, versus this might be the better or more superior heel toe shoe. But for me, the flex worked out well because of the way that I do my heel toe shifting. Now, regardless, it did work for hours and hours of driving in total comfort, and that is the key ingredient. So when we look at it, this from a racing perspective, the Goodyear throttle shoes checked all the boxes. And at $65, they're affordable and they're a huge upgrade over using like cross trainers or a running shoe as a sim racing shoe. No rounded heel, big grooves to get hung up on the pedals, the kind of things that you don't really want. Now, when I consider these as a casual, walk around, express your love for racing type shoe, they're just not gonna pass the muster for all day walking. They're too stiff, there's just not enough support and padding for all day walking for a shoe snob like me. I'll take the running shoes in those circumstances. Now, when I think of these as a track day shoe, maybe I'm gonna put them on in the morning, drive to the track, do some laps. I'm gonna eat lunch, turn some more laps, and then drive home. I think they're gonna be a good, comfortable shoe for that type of usage, but then I'm gonna take them off right when I get home. And for a sim racer, when you're sitting in your sim rig and all you need to do is walk to the fridge or walk the dog and then back to your rig, they're gonna work pretty well for that. 
And I really dig having Goodyear branding on my shoes. It definitely says racing to anyone in the world. In fact, if I were them, I would take that logo and I would blow it up over the entire size of the shoe just to make them that more flashy. So I hope you enjoyed our review of the Goodyear Tire Company Throttle Racing Sneaker. I hope I've answered any questions you might have. And if you want to check out the Ori, I have a link in the description to that video as well where I make comparison to some other shoe options for sim racing. And I think I pointed out the difference between this and the Ori, just to be perfectly clear. If you want to check them out for yourself, go to GoodyearFootwear.com. And of course, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can find out when we have any other reviews or new shows coming out. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.